If you're looking for a knit stitch that combines loads of texture with a nice methodical eight row repeat, then the diagonal rib stitch is the one for you. This knit stitch pattern consists of a nice easy eight row repeat. You are only using knit and purl stitches and you create these lovely lines of diagonal texture. It's a take on a two by two rib, so you're still working in sets of two, but as you are staggering your stitch pattern, you are bringing out these beautiful diagonal lines. And if that wasn't enough, this stitch is completely reversible. So it looks the same on the front as it does on the back, making it perfect for a lovely squishy scarf or a central texturized pattern incorporated into a larger baby blanket project. So grab your needles, grab some yarn, and let's get knitting. Diagonal rib stitch is worked in a multiple of four. So when you are casting on your stitches, you want to cast on in multiples of four. I like to use the long tail cast on method, but you can go ahead and use whichever cast on method you like. As I'm working just a small sample today, I'm going to cast on 24 stitches, but you can cast on however many or as little as you like, as long as it is in a multiple of four. Diagonal rib stitch is an eight row repeat and I'm going to walk you through each of those eight rows and then I'll talk you through also how you cast off your project when you are ready to finish off. For row one, you want to knit two, purl two, all the way to the end of the row. So just repeat those four stitches over and over until you reach the end of the row. Knit two and then purl two. Row two is worked in exactly the same way as row one. So you want to knit two, purl two, all the way from the beginning to the end of the row. Just repeat those four stitches over and over, knit two, purl two. And you should end the row on a purl two because we cast on in multiples of four. For row three, you want to work the following set of four stitches and repeat them across the row. You want to knit the first stitch, Purl the next two stitches and then knit the next stitch and you repeat that block of four stitches until the end of the row. So knit one, purl two and knit one. Row four is the mirror image of row three. So instead of working knit one, purl two, knit one, you want to work purl one, knit two, purl one and repeat that block of four stitches all the way along the row. So after you've finished that purl one, you go back to another purl one, knit two and purl one all the way to the end of the row. Row five, you want to purl two, knit two, all the way to the end of the row. So it's like the first two rows, but we're working the mirror image. So we were going to purl the first two stitches and knit the next two stitches. And repeat that block of four stitches all the way to the end of the row. Row six is the same as row five. So just like before, you want to purl two, knit two, all the way across the row until the end of the row. Row seven, you want to purl the first stitch, knit the next two stitches, and then purl the next stitch, and repeat that block of four stitches all the way along the row. So purl one, knit two, purl one. Row eight, the final row of our eight row repeat, you want to knit one, purl two, knit one, all the way along the row. So knit the first stitch, purl the next two stitches, and then knit the next stitch, and then go back to the beginning of that block of four and repeat the process again. Knit one, purl two, knit one, all the way across your row. And that completes your eight row repeat. You would now go back to row one and repeat these eight rows over and over until the project is the size that you want it to be. And if I just grab my larger sample, I will show you a couple of quick tips when it comes to casting off. I would always recommend casting off on a row eight in pattern. That means that you knit your row eight as normal, but you cast off as you go. So you knit the two stitches in pattern, lift one over, 
so on and so forth until you get to the end of the row. Firstly, because it completes your row repeat. Secondly, because it means that you are casting off with the side facing you that has the cast on edge. That means that the ridge that the cast off creates will be on the same side as the cast on, and that just gives you a little bit of balance to your project. That being said, there is no right and wrong side to this project. All casting off on the same side as the cast on does is mean that both sides match top and bottom but you can choose whichever side you like the look of better to be your right side. Also, if like me, you struggle to work purl stitches at the beginning of a row, you can add selvage stitches at each end. I have actually added selvage stitches to this project, one at either end. And the way I work those is if it's at the beginning of a row, I knit it. And at the end of the row, I slip it purl wise with the yarn in front. All that does is create a lovely braided edge as opposed to having raw edges without any selvage stitches like I've done here. And that's how you knit the diagonal rib stitch. If you would like some written instructions to go alongside the video, then I have left written instructions on my blog and I've popped the link in the description below. If you choose to make something out of this stitch or incorporate it into a bigger project, please tag me on social media. I love to see what you're up to. And if you have found this video helpful, then I would absolutely love it if you'd give me a thumbs up. That's all from me for this week and I'll see you again for another video soon. Bye!